This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Frigidaire gas stove and some of the burners are not lighting. They don't even have a click. So probably this harness here, spark ignition harness, one or two of these little switches is faulty. So these are pretty cheap and we're gonna go ahead and switch this out. Here's the model number of the one we're working with today. It's a Frigidaire gas stove. And we gotta make sure we have it unplugged. We're gonna pull off these little uh, burner controls and they just pull straight off, pretty easy. Get them off to the side. And we're gonna be removing uh, the little panel that's underneath these knobs. It's just being held on by four fasteners, two Phillips head screws underneath it near the top of the oven door, and then a couple screws on top of it. So we'll show you how to do it. So open up the oven door. We're gonna zip out these two Phillips head screws that are holding this plate. And those little switches are located right underneath. Pretty easy to do the switches. Um, just push right into position. They don't even have any fasteners holding them in. So it's got the second Phillips head screw from underneath and then there's a couple of um, screws on the top. To get to those we just push in on these spring clips. They're located about three inches in on either side. And then we want to very carefully lift up this panel by about, only by about maybe an inch, two inches at the most. If you go higher than that it bends the gas tubes and can crimp them or even break them so you just want to come up a little bit you don't need much access just enough to kind of fit your hand in there make sure it's unplugged and put a screwdriver in there to kind of hold it up and then I'm going to loosen this one screw this one is actually for some reason it's just finger tight so I'm just using my fingers to unloosen it and it's holding on this little spring clip but you probably will need a quarter inch uh, socket to get to this, just a shallow one, so it's easy to get in there. Or a pair of pliers would do it too. So get that off, and then we're going to do the same on the other side. Put a little quarter inch, and this one again is not on very tight, so I'm just using my fingers to unloosen it. And these spring clips uh, are being held in by these screws, but these screws are also holding on this facade, this this metal plate. So we got to get them both out. And then once that's done, we can just lift that plate right off, and you have direct access to those switches. And those switches just, over time, they stop working. They get dirty, or they get worn out, and they won't send power to the igniter anymore. You're supposed to tell the spark module to activate to send power to the igniters, and they just don't send it anymore. So we took off that facade. Here's the little switches and the harness. And back here uh, on the left-hand side, back where my hand's going, is the spark module. That's the thing that actually makes the high-voltage sparks. They're low amperage, so it doesn't couldn't couldn't electrocute you, but it does hurt a little bit. So again, make sure it's unplugged. And here is the new wire harness with the switches. I pulled it. So now I just need to disconnect the old uh, switch and wiring harness. I'm going to reach in and disconnect the red wire that's going to the spark module. And that's bringing power. And then there's also a black wire. Uh, this one, for some reason, the black wire has a wire nut. So I'm going to just disconnect that wire nut and pull apart that wire. And then I can get that out from inside the stove and then I'm going to pull these uh, switches off. It's just showing you the part number. So Electrolux is the brand but they make parts for a lot of different machines GE and Frigidaire and here is a picture of that part again and this is also a uh, part number. You can order this from Amazon get it pretty fast pretty good price and then we have a little link here you can use too so 
I'm just pulling these off one by one, the old switches, and just got to yank them out towards you. This one had uh, five switches, which is interesting because there's only four burners. The new one comes with just four. So I'm going to push it onto these burner stems and just take your time, kind of wiggle them on. They have a little keyed slot, so they only go in, only go in one way. And then once you get them all the way in, just give them a good push and they'll snap into position. Make sure they're lined up nice and straight and then push them on in. And we go over to the first two. We're going to put it over the stem. And then we'll push them into position until they click. And that's all you got to do for putting on the switches. Pretty easy. Now we just got to bring the red wire over to the spark module and hook it on. And then we're going to um, splice in this black wire. There's another way to do that black wire too where you can feed it all the way to the back and it can it can go into a spade connector but this is a little bit quicker you have l less disassembly just to use the wire nut pretty fast and easy. The red one though it's easy to reach we're just going to go back in there and then put it right on the spark module I'll show you here in a second. That's that red thing over by my right hand and I'm just going to push this spade connector onto the terminal goes right on there, click it on and now that all the wiring's done we're going to get our uh, screwdriver out of there that was helping to hold this up remember you don't want to lift this panel up very high only about maybe two inches maximum because otherwise it can bend the gas tubes too far and they can crimp or even break. So I'm also looking at the igniters underneath here making sure that I don't see any breaks. I want to make sure that the the wires that bring power to the igniters are on there. I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in and then while it's still open I want to give it a little test make sure everything's working. So I'll use one of the burner knobs and I'll just turn them and yeah they fire up right away. So they're all clicking. If you ever have a burner that doesn't click, it's almost for sure that switch is no longer working and you have to replace it. I notice the front one here on the left is still uh, clicking, but we're not getting a flame. So that's probably just due to it being dirty. So I'm going to use a wire brush to clean it up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and put this back together now. I'm putting that plate back on. And I'll put a little Phillips head screw underneath to kind of hold things in position while I do the other attachment points. This, this helps me just keep it in position. So I feed it in by hand, then I've used a screwdriver. I'll do it on the other side. And now I'll go ahead and put in this little screw here that's holding on this spring, this, um, spring clamp and also holding on the top of the plate. So I'm going to put that in there and just put it on, put, spin it in by hand, and then I'll tighten it up with a socket. So getting that one tight, and then I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And then we can just push the upper panel down onto those spring clamps, and that'll lock it into position. Another way you can do this procedure is you can remove the burners. You have to take off some screws that are holding on the burner heads and pull them off and then you can lift this panel off easily. Problem is usually the screws that hold on, hold on the burners are very corroded and you can't really get them off without them breaking. So on an older stove, this procedure is probably the way to go. So I'm gonna feed in that screw, just finger tight and then I'll tighten it up with the wrench. The uh, little screws that hold on the burner heads are very small and if it's a brand new stove it's really easy just to pull those off because uh, they're not corroded. But after even a year's time you get grease and rust in there and if you give that screw even a little bit of turn right or left very often it'll snap and then you have to drill it out and it's a real pain. 
So this way works, you just gotta be careful that you don't bend those gas tubes too much. So you have to just come up a little bit. So now I got the screwdriver out of there. I'm gonna push the top panel back down. There's a couple of pins that help index it on the right and left hand side. And then you wanna push it down. There's that little pin right there. And push it down until the spring clip locks it into position. You wanna make sure it's nice and flat. And then we're gonna go ahead and test it out make sure the burners are all working. Put those knobs back on. That one's good. That one's good. So front one, if we look at it, we can see a uh, clicking, we can see a spark, but the spark is leaving prematurely. It's not going up high above the igniter. It's, it's more at the base. And this could be a cracked piece of porcelain on the igniter, or it could be that it's just really dirty in there. So we're going to use a wire brush to clean up that area. We're going to clean up the burner head, and I'm going to try to get all the grease and gunk out of there and then try it. So put the burner cap back on and give it a shot. Yep, there we go. So a lot of times just cleaning it and then you'll be okay. And that one works, that one works. That one works, and that one works. So we're back in business, and all it needed was those new switches. Pretty easy, pretty fast. I hope this gets yours going too. And please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance so we can send you some more repair videos. Here's a link too for that part if you need to order it. Thanks again for watching.